Up rank. Back in public form. Ashland Public Forum of June 2nd. Uh, public input number one from citizen Eric Navickus. <clears throat> Mayor and Council, I'm directing my comments to the administrator report as it seems most appropriate. I'd like to thank the Mayor and Council for their efforts made to pass the City Hall bond. I believe the Mayor and Council made the correct decision by working to protect the historic structure and including the Community Center and Pioneer Hall in the bond measure. Obviously, many factors played into the voters' rejection of providing funding for this much-needed project. I believe, however, taxpayer exhaustion and a critique of Council budget decisions played a critical role in both the failure of the bond measure and the success of the City Charter change. Obviously, the most glaring example has been the substantial growth of the Police Department and the parks and rec programs that have suffered as a result. When I talked to the public and worked to support the bond measure, I found it difficult to defend the city against the claims of the irresponsible spending. The fact that the council moved to hire additional police officers without a revenue source was fiscally reckless and cannot be defended. Finally, funding these general fund services through regressive utility fees placed on burdens onto those who are already financially stressed, seniors on fixed incomes and low income renters, it is not unsurprising that the voters rejected this bond measure and want to see the change in their city charter. Again, I am disappointed to see how little is being done to prepare for the revenue shortfalls that are coming. Having been on the council during the 2007 financial collapse, I saw our administrator, Martha Bennett, act swiftly to address the risks by bringing proposed cuts to this council for approval. Her expert experience guided the council towards decisions that limited risks and long-term impacts. The growth of budget, police budgets is a phenomenon that has taken place in cities across America and has much to do with the current unrest as economic disparity has increased. Cities have attempted to deal with social problems associated with poverty through increased pol pol policing. Budget limitations have resulted in cuts to social programs, park programs, and other beneficial services that create a healthy community. Police are the wrong tool to address issues of poverty like homelessness. It is time to move forward in Ashland and respond to budget shortfalls and reorient our spending to address community needs respectfully. Citizen Eric Navickus. And next to Citizen. Oh, this guy's good. This guy is good. Uh, Citizen Jim Falkenstein. Oh, we can't make him look dumb, can we? Yes, apparently we can. <laughs> Howdy, Mayor and Council. Ah, oh, that's friendly. Thanks for the hard work, tough times, stay home, don't touch your face, etc. I am suggesting that City Council in every meeting verbally acknowledge that public form is now email only and verbally confirm that those emails were read by every uh, council member and verbally reiterate uh, that submitted emails uh, will be available online when the minutes are released. Along those lines, making those minutes and submissions easier to find on the website would be fantastic. I believe that. Uh, at the public forum portion of all local meetings, the most valuable for the occasional participant in our civic process, no matter how petty or futile a grievance may be or how impossible a request is, citizens need to know that there is an all-American town hall forum available to them. There is value in just knowing that there continues to be an opportunity to speak to the entire community about any issue a person finds is important. Professional weirdos like me, yeah, that's me. And Hules will always find a way to send you all a bizarre, snarky note. But for the majority of the city, the public forum is the last best opportunity to say one's piece and make a grand proclamation. Please make sure that the opportunity is not lost and reassure the community that the council is committed to keeping the public in public forum and working to reestablish live testimony. Thanks again and zoom on. Citizen Jim Valkenstein, Ashland. Oh, that was, that was probably the best one. Next citizen. Next citizen. Paul. That's all we get. The name Paul. <clears throat> Mayor Stromberg and city council members, I have been supervising, uh, the supervising physician and medical director for about 20 EMS agencies and ambulance services in Jackson County over the past 30 years, including 30 years for Ashland Fire and Rescue. In the early years before providing ambulance service, it was known as Ashland Fire Department. And 18 years of mercy flights, I have been intimately involved in EMS medic direction locally and throughout Oregon during that time, including revising and editing the county's Ambulance Service Area ASA plan. The uh, question of whether or not Ashland Fire and Rescue should continue providing ambulance service to Jackson County Ambulance Service Area 3, including the citizens of Ashland, 
as it has been doing for about 25 years, is controversial and challenging. This 25-year history should not be ended without significant research, thought, and deliberation, which I do not believe is possible to complete by July 1st, 2020, the deadline to request a three-year extension of the ASA assignment less than a month away. Excuse me. As I understand, the 2005 amended Jackson County Ambulance Service Plan and the Jackson County Codified Ordinances Chapter 1075, the county will make public notice in early July 2020 applying for the ASA 3 assignment, including AF and R, much then must make a, must then make a full application and the county will apply one of the applicants the ASA assignment for five years. Oh, this guy should be on the council. This doesn't make any sense. Uh, if AFNR applies for a three-year extension by July 1st, 2020, and there is no other applicants, a formal application would not be required, and the county may extend AFNR's ASA 3 assignment for three years, which will give ample time for the city of Asheville to adequately study and deliberate on the merits of continuing to provide ambulance services. AFNR does not ask for an extension to be considered for the ambulance service. It would need to submit a full application along with other applicants. It seems to me that a month is too short a time to decide to end the ambulance service. Thus, I think that AFNR should apply for a three-year extension, a simpler and less expensive process, rather than a five-year assignment. I believe that quantitative, primarily financial evaluation of the ambulance service is not likely to provide a def definitive answer to what the ambulance service truly costs. I think that qualitative aspects of the ambulance service, which are more difficult to determine, will end up being the deciding factor on whether or not a city of Ashland should continue in the long term to maintain the ASA 3 assignment. I encourage you to have Ashton Fire and Rescue apply for three-year ASA extension by the uh, July first 2020 deadline thank you for your consideration and your work on behalf of the citizens of ashland somebody named paul there you go that was uh, what june 2nd there you go that was a while ago right that's it june second out there uh you know that, that, that's it that's, that's the end of that Bumps you up ashland public forum